Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Based on the concept of the Captive Air Amphibious Transporter, or the CAT, an air-filled track system was adopted by the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory, or MCWL, in its new technology. The Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector, or UHAC, started in 2008 intending to design an amphibious vehicle with low PSI. This technology was developed to deploy Marines in areas the current technology cannot reach. The UHAC prototype is a ship-to-shore connector, currently half the size of the intended full-size machine. The half-scale UHAC is 18 feet tall and weighs 38 tons overall. It moves at four knots, using a track system with flotation-like pads that self-propel through different terrains. These pads enable the land-sea capability of the UHAC. They are similar to the continuous track of a tank, fitted with captured air foam cells that provide buoyancy. They act as paddles in the water and behave as track-driven pads on land. This system allows a very low ground pressure footprint of almost one pound per square inch or one PSI, that helps make the UHAC truly amphibious. In 2014, the MCWL sponsored an Advanced Warfighting Experiment, or AWE, at RIMPAC, where they demonstrated the capabilities of a UHAC half-scale prototype. The UHAC departed Marine Corps Training Area Bellows and entered the water. It propelled towards the amphibious dock landing ship USS Rushmore, LSD-47, and entered its well deck. After boarding the landing craft, the UHAC was loaded with an internally transportable vehicle. Finally, it launched from the well deck and successfully returned to shore. The air-filled track system of UHAC allows the vehicle to pass through rough terrains like mud, sand, and marshland efficiently. Several areas are out of Marine Corps reach because of fewer port facilities and inadequate ways to develop beach landing sites. With a full-scale UHAC, the Marine will be able to easily access the unprepared areas with beach terrain to offload equipment and supplies from the sea to the shore. A full-scale UHAC is expected to be 84 feet long and up to 34 feet high. It would transport up to three M1 Abrams tanks at up to 20 knots. The range of this future connector will be around 200 miles. Once ashore, it will be able to proceed inland over 10-foot obstacles and through marsh or mud. So we're using this vehicle as a demonstrator, as a potential future connector uh, that could allow us to come into areas that are unprepared. Uh, in the future, the Marine Corps uh, sees an environment where we may or may not have access to port facilities or to prepared beach landing sites. 
this kind of vehicle demonstrates one such concept that would allow us to come into areas that are unprepared. The UHAC will potentially replace the landing craft air cushion, or LCAC hovercraft. It will have a heavier payload capacity of 150 to 190 tons, compared to 65 tons of LCAC. Moreover, the UHAC is estimated to cost less than half as much to build and maintain per unit, compared to LCAC, which is why the Marine Corps is eager to attain it. Over the years, there have been a lot of developments in amphibious vehicles that transport Marines ashore and into the fight. However, it was the LCAC that revolutionized amphibious operations entirely. The concept design of the present-day LCAC began in the early 1970s. Two prototypes were built separately, and the technical feasibility and operational capability of these prototypes led to the production of LCAC, used today. It was first deployed in 1987 aboard USS Germantown, LSD-42. The LCAC is operated by a crew of five and operates from all amphibious well deck ships, including LHA, LHD, LSD, LPD, and ESD. The LCAC design is of utmost importance. The air cushion allows LCAC to reach more than 70% of the world's coastline, whereas a conventional landing craft can only reach 15%. Before it is launched from a well deck, the skirt of the LCAC is inflated to create a cushion of escaping air upon which the craft rides. Later, it is slowly launched into the water by following instructions of the well deck control officer. LCAC has an overall payload capacity of 60 to 75 tons. It is used by the U.S. Marine Corps to transport equipment and troops from amphibious ships to shore. There are two ways of delivering troops to the shore, by air and by sea. The Europeans primarily used landing craft for sea operations. The landing craft is a small and medium seagoing watercraft that transports equipment and supplies onto potentially hostile shores and deploys soldiers to conduct offensive military operations. Landing craft are practical and adaptable for planned or emergency unplanned missions. On the other hand, landing craft utilities, or LCUs, are particularly useful for providing aid and support. They are also capable of transporting tracked or wheeled vehicles, like BV-206 tanks and trucks. Additionally, LCU can accommodate almost 130 Marines on deck. Another boat used for carrying vehicles and transporting troops is the Landing Craft Mechanized, or LCM. They came to prominence during World War II when they were used to land troops or tanks during Allied amphibious assaults. LCM can transport around 110 combat-ready personnel at 10 knots, 
and 130 personnel without their gear at almost 12 knots. The U.S. also uses utility boats to transport cargo from shore to sea and vice versa. These vessels are mostly used as a med boat whenever there are casualties. The utility boat moves at 40 knots to assist and transport the injured back quickly and effectively. They are operated by a four-person crew, including two deckhands, an engineer, and a captain. Due to their short size and small beam, the utility boats are efficient in emergencies like floods. So right here with all these benches, each bench has a seatbelt for each personnel, which is uh, 30 personnel that we can put on here to carry and transport. Right there is our brow ramp, so if, uh, when we hit the beach to uh, offload the personnel to support the mission, we'd lower that and let them off go, and then we'll race back up and back off the beach to supply more troops if need be. Sometimes a river can also act as a barrier which is why the Marine Corps creates a temporary bridge to move vehicles and equipment across the river. Bridge erection boats, or BEBs, are a vital mobility asset for constructing water bridges. They act as ferries across strategic waterways while giving thrust anchorage against strong currents during bridge construction. The system also consists of modular, foldable pieces made of aluminum that can be disassembled and transported by trucks. These folded bridge sections are launched into the water, where they pop up. BEBs are used to move and connect improved ribbon bridge, or IRB, bays. All bays are 6.92 meters long, 8.63 meters wide, and 1.30 meters high when unfolded. It is essential to mention that the ramp bay can reach a bank height of 2 meters. The total weight of a single ramp bay is approximately 6,350 kilograms. That's not even crazy. The best part is that the boat operators can use BEBs to push individual IRB bays across bodies of water to get initial supplies and equipment to the opposite shore. Later, they can line up and connect bays to create a bridging system spread across wet gaps greater than 100 meters. After all the bays are put together, the structure can be used as a floating bridge to ferry military vehicles such as tanks across open water. If there aren't enough bays to bridge the entire river, the Marines use them as rafts. They position the bay on one side of the river and delicately place the tank on it. The ramp bay is then ferried across the river and onto the other side. This technique is widely used by Marines to transport military vehicles from one shore to another smoothly. Ferrying armored vehicles across water timely and efficiently requires a lot of training. The U.S. conducts several training procedures for the Marines to develop the skill set needed to deploy troops, equipment, and armored vehicles in a hostile situation. Moreover, the U.S. is spending millions of dollars on developing new connectors like UHACs and upgrading the existing LCACs to ease the transportation process for the Marines. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.